After watching this video, you will understand exactly how to scale dropshipping stores the right way. I'm going to talk a lot about misinformation you're going to see regularly on YouTube and actually tell you what worked for us and what we saw our students succeed with. So number one, there's no testing and scaling phase and there's no clear line where, all right, now I'm testing phase and right now I'm switching and this is scaling phase. Because by definition, scaling means you spend more money. And when you test a new creative or a test a new interest, you scale because you test a new thing and that test requires new money. So instantly by testing something, you scale automatically. Okay. And this is exactly how scaling works. You always test new things and then take the things which actually you tested before and they worked well and spend more money on them. And that's basically called horizontal testing and vertical testing. Horizontal means you test a bunch of different things. So let's say you test five audiences, they do decent, and then you test another five different audiences or five new creatives or five new offers or f just new things. And that's horizontal testing. And then you have things which work the best. You test 10 audiences and one of them just strikes you as having by far the best cost per purchase, the best draws, the, everything is the best on that one. You take that one and create it again. Okay. And you just start spending more money on that particular ad set and that audience. Now there are huge mistakes, which you can do when scaling vertically. A lot of people think that if one thing just does really well, you start spending more money on that and you're going to make more money. So let's say you have a $10 ad set, which does amazing. What you do is you just change that $10 ad sets to $15 or to $20 or to $50, whatever you change it to. And you expect that to work equally as good as on the $10. So let's say on $10, you made three sales, which are, is really, really profitable. Then on $20, you're, you're expecting to make six sales. Whenever you change something, which is working really well. And by change, I mean, increasing the budget, just touch anything. You have a huge risk of the whole thing messing up. I've seen this so often where you have an asset, which is great. You increase the budget and you ruin everything and you try to go back on the budget and it doesn't work anymore. The best analogy I can give you here is a Facebook audience is like a pie. So you have this pie of all the people which are inside of that audience. Let's take dogs and you just target the word dogs and the whole pie is not going to be targeted. It's just going to be a slice of that pie, which you're targeting in reality, because you only spend $10 per day. You cannot like show the ad to everybody. Okay. Then you change something about the ad set and instantly you target a different slice of that pie. If you change anything, you, if you change the creative, if you change whatever you change about the ad set, you're targeting a different slice. Now, sometimes nothing happens because the entire pie is amazing and everything works, works great. But sometimes you just hit the perfect slice of the pie and by changing something, everything gets ruined. So it's extremely important to not touch working things. The golden rule in the beginning is I need to hold on on everything that works extremely tight. I have no room to risk my very best ad set just to increase the budget because there's no room to risk anything which works in the beginning. And even later on, there's no real reason to do this unnecessary risk. There's actually another solution how to scale ad sets and scale things in general without having the risk of messing everything up. And this is a very important business principle. Whenever you have two options, which could both lead to the same outcome and one of them can go wrong and the other one cannot, you don't take the riskier one because the upside is not higher. It's not that if you start increasing the budget, it's going to be better than with this other method. And, and the other method is basically this. Instead of increasing the budgets, you just recreate the ad sets on the same exact budget. So it's pretty straightforward. However, there is a small thing which a lot of people do wrong. They take their best performing ad set and they click on duplicate on Facebook. And then they basically have the second ad set. For whatever reason, clicking duplicate can also mess up the ad set. So the initial ad set can actually get messed up by you just clicking on duplicate. Something happens on Facebook sometimes, it's not always, but there's a risk involved and you don't need that. So what you need to do is recreate the same exact ad set. Okay. It's very important to do this because if you do that, there's actually no risk involved at all. And the initial ad set is not going to go down because you recreated it to a new one. Now it's very important to understand that every ad account is different. And sometimes I've seen that on an ad account, increasing the budget actually works way better than what I just described. But the default thing, which you need to start out with is recreating because the likelihood I've just seen that that's the best way is way higher.
okay? Increasing budget sometimes works better. And sometimes, for example, CVOs work better on a net account and sometimes ABOs. And there's no real best way of scaling because for everybody it's different and you need to understand that. It's very important, for me, it's very important that I don't transfer the things which work for me 100% to my students because I understand that the Facebook algorithm is different, okay? So I have my preferred method and we have plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E. And we start with the one which actually works the most often. If that doesn't work, we go to plan B. If that doesn't work, we go to plan C. So on Facebook, you just need to be a little bit more flexible and learn by testing and seeing what works on your product and works, what works on your ad account, okay? And you need to stay away from people who wanna push things down your throat which work for them but don't work for you. It's only about the numbers. It doesn't, like if you're in my program I tell, and I tell you, test this and it doesn't work and you already tested something else previously which worked really well, like, if I, would, if I would be insisting on testing the thing I told you about, I am bullshitting you. I just want to make myself look better because I want to be the guy who told you to do this. And if you figured out randomly for yourself that something else on your ad account works better, do that. Don't listen to anything else than the numbers you're seeing in front of yourself. Now let's get into the next thing which is super crucial for scaling. Don't think about scaling if you didn't make profits yet. Scaling means you increase whatever you have. So if you're losing money and you start scaling, you lose more money. And I know this sounds very basic to most of you. However, I've seen a lot of people come to me showing me how they scaled unprofitable things. And it's just crazy to me. So what you need to capitalize on is groups which work for you, okay? What I mean by that is, for example, on your ad account, you see that one audience with one creative works really, really well. And you tested a bunch of other things, but this is the thing which works extremely well. You need to focus on that the most, and most of your new budget which comes into Facebook is gonna be spent on there. And you need to be extremely intolerant on cutting everything else off. That means that all the other things you tested are actually bad. For example, if you have a product where you test like 20 different things and only two creatives work, then you instantly know that the product is actually not the problem because these creatives are great and all the other 18 or whatever are not working. So whenever you see that, you need to be super intolerant by cutting everything out, all the 18 different things, which are not working and only focus on the two which are and basically allocate all the money which you would have spent on the other 18 to the two, okay? And it's very important to do that as quickly as possible. So whenever you see that two creatives do work, then you need to start going deeper. How are those two creatives different from everything else you tested? And you're gonna start, start split testing smaller things on those two creatives. For example, a new headline, or for example, a new scroll stopper or a second clip. Just different variations of the thing which works best for you. And whenever you have something was, what's working well, you just go deeper and deeper and deeper into that by testing more things inside of that group. The next thing which is just insanely important is you cannot forget about testing new products. When you have things which are working great, the instant thought you should have in your head is, holy fuck, if this goes down, I'm broke. I don't make any income anymore. So it's really important to diversify here and start testing new products, okay? And that's the easiest thing to forget. Most people who f find the first success, find the first winner, just stop testing new products because they don't see their instant returns from that. They tested five products, one of them worked, and they, fo and they focus on that. And they understand that they, to find a new product, they're gonna have to test a new bunch of products, and the first ones won't, will probably not work. And what they basically end up doing is just scaling all the, spending all their money on only scaling their, their existing store. And when something goes down there, they're fucked. And the last thing I wanna talk about here is you're gonna need to split test a lot of things and optimize everything to the T. When you start spending more money, you're gonna have to improve with everything because on scale, profit margins are actually slimmer. And because profit margins are actually slimmer, you need to understand that optimizing everything was the only thing which is gonna save you. If you have a 25% margin on $500 per day, you're not gonna have a 25% margin on $5,000 per day if you don't change things. You're gonna need to have a perfect email marketing structure, a perfect SMS marketing structure, the perfect upsells, the perfect creatives, really good offers, all those things you're just gonna find out by testing a lot of things by the time. 
And that's how you keep high margins on a higher scale. Because if you don't change anything, it's going down, I guarantee you that. It's not linear. Facebook doesn't work linear. Like if you spend $250 and make 500 from that, you're not going to have spent $2,500 and make 5,000 from that. I guarantee if you don't change anything, it's going to be way less than 5,000. Maybe you're even going to be unprofitable if you don't optimize everything. Okay, so, so the main message here is don't get lazy. Whenever you start seeing success, you cannot allow yourself to get lazy and to think that you made it and you need to chill. And you're actually gonna see this in the next couple of interviews we're gonna post. Those next people I interviewed were actually people who are, were in the program and just started to make money. And you're gonna see how anxious they are about everything right now because they only have one winning product and only make like 1K per day. They're super afraid of everything because I push this message down their throat. Don't be lazy, don't think you made it because you haven't yet. You're just making 1K per day in sales, which means you're making like $200 per day in profit, which is nothing, which is like 6K per month, which again, could be okay if you make that over a whole year, but if you have one month which you, where you made 6K profit, that's bad. That's not what you want. You, you don't want one 6K month and then basically never money again. You want long-term consistent money from the dropshipping business model. All right, so the last thing here is if you actually want to sign up for a free consultation session with me personally, click the link below, sign up for that, and we're going to find out if we actually are a good fit to start working together one-on-one -on -one in our program, all right? I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to scale your e-commerce business, or if you're a beginner, how to get started. And also, so that's that, and if you have any other questions in general, you can just follow me on Instagram, I'm going to link it somewhere here. And yeah, I basically started this new account a few weeks ago, I'm more active on there. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask.